Hello everyone, this is Grace. It is August the 15th, 2021, and we are continuing our study on head coverings. And we left off on um, at 1 Corinthians 11, verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and the glory of God. So we've already gone over the scriptures that show the men in the Old Testament Old Testament did have coverings on their head all of the time, including the high priest who wore a mitre as part of his uniform in service of the um, most holy place in the Bible. So we were about to take a look at the image, the image of God, and then we're going to go on to the glory of God and man. So let's go ahead and go back to Genesis. And we're just going to look at this briefly. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now we know that man is in the image of God physically. However, both male and female are in the image of God spiritually. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And then he created man and he told him and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So then afterwards, he rested on the seventh day. He did a few more things. Adam gave name to gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field, but for Adam there was not found and help me. And so in, then he created the woman, the wife. So once the wife was created, and I don't think I put the scripture in here, I was planning on I did not but I did put this in here. This is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that God created man in the likeness of God he made him. One man. But let's go to Malachi chapter 2. Verse 15. And he did not make and did he not make one? Yet had he the residue of the Spirit, and wherefore one, that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against his wife, the wife of his youth. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to go into details with translating this right now, because I do plan on doing a video. But what this is saying is that um, God made... When the man is joined with the woman... And when they're reunited, they become one again. However, there is a blessing in the marriage in that there is a residue of the spirit that was taken away from Adam and not put back um, in the man or the woman. But when they become one again, that, that spirit is placed back upon them. That's what this is saying. But I'm not going to translate it for you right now. It, um, you'll you'll have to wait until I do the video because I don't want to go through the words with you and take a look at that. But that's the translation for it. It's saying that when they are rejoined together, then that spirit is placed back upon them. This verse right here is just added in as well. Whenever you see putting away, that's like a way that they signal to each other that they added that verse in there. So you want to, I'm not saying it's always added but you want to look for that because they really liked using putting away instead of sending her away. So this verse, it it doesn't belong in here. It was added on, but um, yeah, I just brought you here for this one anyway. So let's see what else I have here. Oh, we went to glory. Glory is the next one. So let's go back. So when it says... For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much he is the image and the glory of God. Well, yeah, he's the image of God, but it doesn't say the woman is the image of God. And both of us 
are the image of God. Both of us are. He is in the form as far as image, though. But, um... I don't know. Maybe they just mean form. I think I read it, and I had a problem with that still when I thought of it as form, but I can't remember what the issue was now. Even if you just say it, they just mean form. Um... So he is in he is in the form and the glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. Well, glory just means praise. Glory just means praise in the Bible. Um so let's look up what the Bible says is the glory of God. And um because the, both the what is the glory of God? Because the Christian man can be praised. The non-Christian man can be praised. It doesn't really mean that they are the glory of God. The Bible doesn't teach that. Okay? Psalms 49, 16. Be not thou afraid when one is made rich, when the glory of his house is increased. So he has praise in his house because of his wealth. They made a calf in Horeb and worshipped the molten image. Thus they changed their glory into the similitude of an ox that eateth grass. So our glory was God. And we took the glory of God and made an image of an ox. Oh. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was disposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. His praise, his prestige, his renown. Thou hast made his glory to cease and castest Rome down to the ground. Okay, that's not a good one because it doesn't explain what it is. He has stripped me of my glory and taken the crown from my head. That's a good one. I bring near my righteousness. It shall not be far off. And my salvation shall not tarry. And I will place salvation in Zion. For Israel is my, for Israel my glory. He glorifies his people. All the flocks of Keter shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up in, with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. The sun shall be no more thy light by day. Neither by brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee. An everlasting light and thy glory and thy God thy glory. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glory, because you can do all of these things. These are all reasons for men to praise you. Wisdom, might, riches, strength. You can praise anyone for anything, okay? But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord with exercise, which exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. I think that's it. That's all of our scripture, so we're done with that. Okay, so... For as much he is the image and the glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. It's in its most. Here's the thing: it we had to make sense of this at the time. We had to. So, in order to make sense of this in this um in this setting, the entire subject of head coverings had to be taken from the original topic of head and be shifted to hair. Even though we have a clear example down here that says it's not hair. It's just, you can see it's not hair, but you can't quite pinpoint it until you realize that these verses are deceptions. The way that it should read is, but every woman that prayeth or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. I should have read back a little bit further because it doesn't talk about the man in that verse.
let's start from here. Let's start from the beginning. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and that the head of the woman is the man, the head of the wife is the husband, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying publicly, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head, having his head covered with someone other than Christ, or someone in between him and Christ, like a, wait a second, we have to come back to that, I'm sorry, let's start over. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth and prophesied, prophesied with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head, for the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. So these two, we kind of understand we're good with those, okay? We know that the woman came from the man. But it says... But it tells you that the man came, the woman came from the man, and for this cause ought the woman to have power on her head. The woman ought to have power over her head because of the angels. So let's let's work this out. Because the woman um, was created. For the man, we can. We also know that from other scriptures, which I didn't put in here. I'm sorry. We also know that every that we were created, the earth was created by God through Christ. Everything came through Christ. So can't we apply that same logic here? That the that man was created through Christ. Just as woman was created through man. So when you apply that logic. And you have a woman. Who is say. With her husband. And. Her husband is a non-believer. Okay. Let's. Um. Let's look at the scenario of hold on. I have to I have to choose my words here. Just a moment. Let me think about this. Okay, I think I know how to explain it. Christ, um, everything was created through Christ, and Christ is a is God of this earth, okay? He's he's not God, but he's God of this earth. He has been given that authority by God. Now you may have a problem with this if you believe in the Trinity, but that's, you need to work that out. Christ is a created being. It tells you that in the Bible. They've added, they must have added something at the last minute because there's only like one, maybe two scriptures that support the Trinity. So that was the last minute thing they threw in there, right? But Christ is an angel, but he's the archangel, right? So, but, but the angels know that Christ has authority over the earth. They understand that. They have authority of their own. They have they have jobs that they do. They talk about the angel that has authority over the sun. They talk about the the uh there was an angel in Nebuchadnezzar that had authority over Nebuchadnezzar that pronounced the judgment against him. They each have their own thing. There was a covering angel. Listen. So, they can be happy for Christ. There's no problem there. <laughs> okay, I just want to make that clear. There's no problem with that. However, when someone betrays Christ, they know that that person is a rebel against Christ because Christ is their authority. It's Christ is our authority. And it's easy for them to turn away from that person. However, you have a woman who is a Christian who is turning away from her head. Now, just as a man would turn away from Christ, but she's doing the right thing. She's serving God. It's confusing for them. 
That's why it says because of the angels. The angels are watching what we're doing. If the angel sees that woman at the front of the church speaking out against something that they know that her husband despises, even though she's doing the right thing, it's confusing for them. That's what I believe this means. That's the only sense that I could make of it, given the context in what it, which it was given. Because it says for this cause. She's, obey she's disobeying her head. She's going against her head, which is wrong in and of itself. But we know that God takes precedence, of precedence over all of these things. So she's doing the right thing in the wrong way. And do they turn away? Do they stand beside her? Does the angel that is there stand beside her? Do they turn away? Why not just not do it? Why not just not do it for the angel's sake? So that they don't have to make a decision like that. And so that nobody else around you has to as well. So that's why I think that's in there. Because this is a real verse. There's no problem with it. We just don't. We may not have the perfect understanding. But it's not illogical you see. Nevertheless neither is the man without the woman. Neither the woman without the man in the Lord. So neither one is independent of the other. Because, because man is not special because he's a man. Well, he may be special because he's in the physical image of God. But if he's not worshiping God, what is that? How does that mean anything? How is a non-Christian man more important than a Christian woman? No. Oh. No, it's just, it doesn't mean anything. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. But all things are of God. Judge, and I think all of this is clear, so I'm just reading through the rest of this quickly. Judge in yourself, is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Doth not even nature te itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman having long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. Okay, so here we're given an analogy. It doesn't really have anything to do with hair, as I pointed out up here. It doesn't have anything to do with hair, but it is an analogy of the covering that is placed over the man as opposed to the covering that is even given to a woman over her hair, in her hair. So it, it gives you an example in the spiritual and it gives you an example in the nature. But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither neither the churches of God. So, hold on. Okay, so, um, but if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. So he tells you that if she wants to pray publicly, she can. If, 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 you know, if it's that, if it means that much to them, let them do it. Because we don't have any such customs that disallow the woman from praying just because she's married to a non-Christian man. It's just suggested. Okay? But let's go back up here real quick because I just kind of breezed over this um, briefly. It's where it was talking about the covering for the man. Um, it says... Here we go. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. If your covering is Christ, and I'm not picking on anyone here, because many churches do this. We have a system of hierarchy in these churches that was never meant to be there. I'm not talking about, listen, this, the Seventh-day Adventist church has a hierarchy as well. They have the head of the general conference. So the head of the general conference, uh, a pope-like figure, any man that's given authority over you and your translation over the scriptures or your connection with Christ. No, I take it back. The only church that I can think of that has 
that has granted themselves authority over your relationship with God is the Catholic Church. As far as Christian religions are concerned, many churches do this. Many churches do this, but not the Protestant churches. Now, they have authorities in the churches that say, well, you can't be a part of, you can't sit at the table with us. You can't be a part of our church. You have no connection to God here unless you jump through these hoops or follow our rules. And they all do that, okay? But it was never supposed to be like that. And that's what it's talking about when it says, any man praying or prophesying having his head covered. Because the covering is supposed to be Christ. That is supposed to be your leader in the faith. Not father this or this priest or um, the Pope or any such figure in the church that puts themselves in an authoritative, authoritative position between you and Christ, you and your worship, that dishonoreth the head of the man, dishonoreth the head of the man. You should not be in such a position. Can you have a pastor? You can. I mean, I don't think they did it in the old times. So, wait, I'm not qualified to answer that question, actually. I haven't researched it enough. But um, probably from looking at this verse, you cannot. <laughs> you cannot have a pastor. Every man is equally qualified to be a pastor, according to this verse. But I'm not going to stick to that. I don't know for sure. I have to do some more research about how it was set up. But... Um, yeah, according to this verse, all men were equally qualified for that position because not one of them is supposed to have anyone between him and Christ. Now, that's not I'm not talking about serving in the temple. They each have positions, just like I said the angels have positions. They each have positions in which they serve Christ in this world. But that has nothing to do with their connection to Christ. They don't go through another man in order to serve God. So that's what it's talking about when it says a man having his head covered dishonored his head. And I think I made it clear already about the woman having her head covered means that she is under a Christian man. And we looked at the scripture in Numbers. I think I left it in here. If I left it in here, I'm not going to go over it again because I already did. Yep, I did. So a woman under a Christian man, she has her head covered, but it's uncovered. It is considered uncovered if this, if, if he's not a Christian. This was a little bit more tricky going through and explaining than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> but I think, I think we made it through okay. And if you don't get it, ponder on it a little bit. I think it'll... I think it'll start to clear itself up as you meditate on it. So I'm going to leave it at that and I will see you in the next video.